أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين اللهم يسر ولا تعسر رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما رب زدنا علما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for giving us opportunity to continue with our journey preparation um, for Ramadan we spoke about many things in the previous lessons to get our mindset prepare us towards the month of Ramadan to be able to achieve the goal the main purpose of the month of Ramadan Today we're going to look at or we're going to ask those questions on why Ramadan? What is the reason behind it? We have people in the previous week we made mention that uh, people doing things that are not good whenever you try to advise them when they are not praying they say inshallah if Ramadan comes I will start being nice, I will start being good but the idea here is what is for Ramadan? What is Ramadan coming with that people want to wait until Ramadan before they start doing good? In our previous lessons, we drew our attention on very important points. In the month of Ramadan, we attain piety, our deeds are rewarded multiples. So the other months that are not Ramadan we need to do more good deeds to be able to at least catch up but when we relax not doing good at all waiting for Ramadan what of if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not make us among those that will be alive to witness the month of Ramadan so we have to remember the concept of the fuqaha that goes like wala yahillu li kulli baligin ay akhira tawba it is not accepted or acceptable for any person who has reached the age of puberty to delay tawba whatever you doing that is not right quick rush in seeking for forgiveness Always, as the Prophet said, follow the evil deeds with good deeds, and those good deeds will wipe it. So, when we have some things that we do that are not good, we need to always remember delays, waiting for a specific part of the year or time of the year will not help us. So this is very important. Now, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ask us to fast? We want to quickly connect this because unfortunately, today Muslims will fast because they want to go on diet. Muslims are fasting because doctors said there's a benefit. Muslims are fasting because scientists said they're going to have some sort of uh, benefit out of it but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he told us to do something as Muslims we are not in the state of questioning why does Allah want us to do something more or less when it came to fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself told us the purpose and the reason behind fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us Ya ayuha al-ladhina amanu Kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina bin qablikum 
تتكون. O you who believe, we have prescribed fasting unto you as we did to the nations before you. لا لكم تتكون so that you may attain piety. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us the reason behind fasting is for us to attain piety. We need to develop our iman through the fasting. So now, when you are changing your intention of fasting, you are going to lose the reward of fasting. Because Allah is telling you fast. For fasting, you will attain piety. And you are saying that, I'm going in the month of Ramadan so that I can lose weight. I'm going in the month of Ramadan because the doctor said there's a benefit in it. Now you are changing the intention of fasting. It's very important. Never twist things. Do it because Allah asks you to do it. We are the Ummah that we have the idea of Sam'an wa Ta'a. We listen and obey. We hear what Allah says. We obey. We don't change. We don't bring any opinion to that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse in Surah Al-Baqarah has indeed told us the purpose behind the fasting. And for your information, we are not the first nation. We are not the first that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to fast. In other words, fasting has been some way, channel, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases the iman of his servants. Even before we came to existence. That is why he said, كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ As we prescribe to the nations before you, to those who came before you, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may attain piety. The Prophet ﷺ in this regard, he said regarding fasting, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِحَتْ أَوْ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ When Ramadan comes, when is the month of Ramadan, the doors of Jannah are open for those who are always connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Ramadan comes, people who understood they have a merciful creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows in his ways how he is going to reward them, bless them because of fasting in the month of Ramadan. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, إِذَا جَاءَ رَمَضَانِ فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَغُلِقَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ when Ramadan comes, the doors of Jannah are open and the doors of Jahannam are closed. So for those who do not have any hope, they understood that at least Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has opened a channel, a window for them to be blessed. Not only that, those that have weak iman, those that always say, Shaytan is the reason the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَسُفِدَتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ In another narration it will say وَسُلْسِلَتِ الشَّيَاطِينَ Which means and the shayateen Those who come and mislead you They will be chained So you are given freedom To connect more with Allah And worship Allah in the month of Ramadan so we are opening ourselves. We are connecting with Allah. Looking at these blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. The Prophet sallallahu is trying to draw our attention more on this nature. How we get the reward. How we get this forgiveness. He said, An Abi Hurairata radiallahu anhu. أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال 
الصلوات الخمس والجمعة إلى الجمعة كفارة لما بينهن and it went on and say والرمضان إلى الرمضان so our five daily prayer in between them and one Friday to the other in between them any sins that we commit are that are minor Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to forgive us through the deeds that we do in chains as long as we stay away from kabair major sins so in this brothers and sisters in faith we are looking at Ramadan as a fertile land we are going to invest in a business where the land is considered really nothing to worry about but germination will take place so it's up to us how much we're going to plant it's up to you how much you're going to plant it's up to you whether you're going to have varieties of plants it's up to you whether you're going to concentrate on just one plant it's up to you to look at the opportunity given to you how much you can do to attain the reward in a nutshell when we look at this what we're trying to say here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the month of Ramadan to bless us he brought the month of Ramadan to reward us he brought the month of Ramadan to increase our reward he brought the month of Ramadan to increase our Iman because according to your Iman that is how you are being assessed you can pray one prayer hundreds of people in the same masjid everyone will get different reward according to their Iman we are all behind one Imam but I have more concentration than you no you have more Iman in Allah than me that means that your reward will be better than mine so when Ramadan comes Allah gives you the opportunity for your Iman to be increased when the Iman is increased that means your deeds will be accepted and the reward will be multiplied because you are coming in front of Allah with full yaqeen with full iman the Prophet said man sama ramadan imanan wa ihtisaba gufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhambi whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan imanan with sincere belief Allah says when we fast in the month of Ramadan he is going to increase our Iman the Prophet ﷺ said if Ramadan comes the door of Jannah are open the doors of Jahannam are closed Shaitan has been chained so we got opportunity Allah forgives us mostly in the month of Ramadan the angels are seeking for forgiveness for us so when we stood in the month of Ramadan we have that certainty we have that yaqeen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying wa antum bil ijaba. when you are asking Allah have the certainty have the belief that you are being answered so when we came to Ramadan we have all this certainty we have this yaqeen we have this belief and the Prophet sallallahu is saying man sama Ramadan imana whoever fasts in the month of Ramadan with full belief with full iman wahtisaba and also having all their hopes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi Allah will forgive the previous sins Allah will forgive their previous sins so imagine when Allah forgives you imagine when you are now clean imagine when you get the opportunity free slate to start afresh apart from the piles of reward your bad deeds are gone imagine yourself in this situation fasting is amazing fasting is something else fasting is a way it's a door it's an it's an action that wallahi if Allah is to open the doors for us to see the reality of fasting we will wish every single day of the year is the month of Ramadan Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said regarding fasting 
all the deeds, all the actions of children of Adam is this in the soma except fasting for in the holy one except fasting for the indeed fasting is mine and I'm the one who give reward for fasting imagine the sincerity when you fast knowing that you are going to leave what is considered halal for you you leave your drinking water you leave your daily food for the sake of Allah you can understand what we call the training ground if you can leave what is halal for the sake of Allah why can't you leave what is haram so the action of living what is halal for you in your life those are what helps you to be able to stay away from what is haram and when you do that when you do this action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one that rewards and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is saying regarding fasting as jannah fasting is a shield that protects you fasting is a shield that protects you it's a, it's, it's a protector that protects you from Jahannam because of that because of that for you not to lose this reward for you not to use this not to lose this protection the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying idha kana yawm sawm ahadukum fala yarfus wala yasqab fa inna fa in sabbahu ahadun aw qatalahu falyaqul in mur'in sa'im when a, one of you fasts not bad language you not use bad language should not say things that are not accepted should not do things that are haram if someone even insult you or trying to start a fight tell them i am a fasting person i am fasting because of fasting i am not going to do anything in return this is taking us to the meaning of fasting linguistically the meaning of fasting linguistically means as some when they say ali imsak that is for one to hold on to something not to do things that are not accepted we saw in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling uh, maryam when she had the baby going to the people when they ask you a question tell them you are fasting which means you are not talking to them today so when you are fasting someone try to bring a fight tell them i am fasting and for that matter i don't have time to do or to act or to do things that are not accepted now all this when we look at that we are trying to understand the blessings that are in the month of Ramadan and the Prophet is saying والذي نفسي نفس محمد بيده لخلوف فم الصائم أطيب عند الله من ريه المسك I swore by the one that does my soul in his hands my soul is in his hands the smell the sourness of the mouth of a fasting person is better in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of what al misk this draw our attention when musa alayhi salam was asked by allah to fast he fast for 30 days when it came to yawm al miqat the day that he's going to have communication with allah he decided i have been fasting for so many days i have some smell that will not be good he went and brushed his teeth to clean his mouth before talking to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah is telling ya musa i am more happier than that sourness of your mouth than you brushing it go and add 10 more days this to the ummah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has been taken we don't have that burden you can have chewing stick to brush your teeth all day in the month of ramadan as long as nothing goes down your throat your fasting is accepted in this we look at when you fast when a person fasts he has two types of joy 
One, when you finish fasting, there is this happiness of finishing the fast. There is this joy of the day of Eid. And also the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has a specific door of Jannah that will not be open except for you, those who fast. So if you look at that, respected brothers and sisters, what else do you want if not to take advantage of the month of Ramadan? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you to fast. Not eating or drinking or sexual intercourse does not make any change in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's for you to train yourself. But when you fast and you spend your time watching movies all day, how do you connect this fasting when you are told Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an This is the month in which Qur'an was sent down Wouldn't you take advantage and recite the Qur'an more in the month of Ramadan? Wouldn't you take advantage to understand the Qur'an more in the month of Ramadan? Wouldn't you take advantage to act upon the commandment of Allah in the month of Ramadan? Wouldn't you take advantage to make lots of zikr in the month of Ramadan? Wouldn't you take advantage to ask Allah to forgive you more in the month of Ramadan? Why will you spend your time and energy instead of asking Allah's forgiveness? You rather sit there and then watch movie all day. How shaitan mislead us? Even if you go to the Muslim world today, as we sit down here counting the days of Ramadan, appearing in front of our eyes go to all middle east check the channels of tv they started advertising movies that will go in the month of ramadan our mind is being taken away from the reality our conscience is being polluted with dunya we are fasting not eating not drinking but that sit we don't have anything between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How, what, what, where is the fasting? So we need to start looking at reality. The month of Ramadan is the month we can change and become better Muslims. Allah created us to worship him. We, let, we sat down here and analyzed our timing the 24 hours a day, how much do we spend in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Not much. And this is another opportunity. Ramadan has come. The doors are open. No laziness. Shaitan has been trained. Get the reward and then you relax, watch a movie all day. Wasting your time? We need to rectify this. Because the Prophet ﷺ told us, مَنْ لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلُ بِهِ وَالْجَهْلُ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامُهُ وَشَرَابُهُ Whoever does not give up forged speech, evil action, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not interested in you not eating or drinking. So you can see the fasting is supposed to be not just for eating and drinking, but our attitudes need to change. The games we play, let's put them aside. Unnecessary things that we do, let's put them aside. The books that we read that are not religious, put them aside. The movies that we watch, put them aside. Now bring Allah into your life. Read more Quran, do more dhikr, connect with Allah. See this habit, make it in a way Every single day, you have a portion of Quran you're going to read. You have the dhikr you're going to do. You have the tasbih you're going to do. Look at the ways in which you can give charity in this month. When all these come together, create the habit. Every single day, this is what I'm doing. So that after Ramadan, you can keep the habit. In this, we go to that famous scholar, Imam Ghazali. Who is saying fasting can be divided into three categories? We have fasting that is umum for all general fasting. General fasting, 
Uh, remember, we spoke about our iman, the level of your iman, the level of your reward. Imam Ghazali said, we have the general fasting, which is what all Muslims believe in. And that is eating and drinking. Sexual intercourse spoil that fasting. That is the iman of the general, the mass. But then we have the believers, those who have iman, they for them in their sight, it's not about just eating and drinking only. They went further and said, if we are fasting, our eyes has to fast. If we are fasting, our ears has to fast. If we are fasting, our nose has to fast. If we are fasting, our mouth has to fast. If we are fasting, our hands has to fast. If we are fasting, our legs have to fast. If we are fasting, all the body has to be fasting. So for that matter, if we are to say things, if we are to look at things, if we are to listen, should be everything in their life. You can see the difference between their Iman and the Iman of the general public. So these people, Imam Ghazali said, their fasting is their Asawm al Khas, Al Khusus. And then the third group, which is Khusus al Khusus, Al Khas al Khas. This group is not about eating and drinking only. It's not about their hands, their mouth, their eyes, their nose. It's not about that. For them, it is obvious why will i be fasting and my hands do something else my hands has to take action either i'm using it to open the book of allah reading or i'm using the hands giving charity or i'm using the hands counting might as be because it is a month of what worship so every part of my body need to take some action but they went further and said when we say we are fasting and our hearts can think of something apart from Allah a minute by that itself it spoil our fasting why will I say I'm fasting and my heart can think of something else so to them even their heart need to be fully connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so you can see our levels and if you know this you will understand how depending on your iman your reward goes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the maratib of Islam. We have the general, which are Muslims, and some things Allah knows Muslims are struggling with that. So he does not call them to do. Then he will call believers, mu'minun. Some things, even the mu'minun, they are a bit slack on that. Then Allah will be dealing with muhsinun, which is those who are in perfection. That is how the steps of Islam is. Look, when the Arabs came to the Prophet and said, Yamu, we have, we have Iman. In Surah al hujurat we have Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a verse to tell them, No. Bal kulu aslamna. Say, we have submitted. Because Iman has not yet entered your heart. So we want to ask ourselves, in which group are we? Are we in the group who we only care about eating and drinking? That is what fasting is all about? Or we want to go further and see how best can we connect with the general mass of the society, community? How can we engage? How can we create something good? How can we create something that will fetch more reward? We have all this choice to make. If you are preparing for Ramadan, Choose which will be better for you. The Prophet Sallallahu said regarding this, رُبَّ صَائِ مِنْ حَذَّهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطْشِ وَرُبَّ قَائِ مِنْ حَذَّهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ السَّهِرُ Most people in the month of Ramadan, they are reward in the month of Ramadan or the benefit they get in the month of Ramadan is just hunger and thirst most people the night prayer they will do in the month of Ramadan the only thing they get out of it is lack of sleep because the other things that they need to take into consideration in their life still continues they did not care about that 
That is why Sayyidina Umar was saying, ليس الصيام من الطعام والشراب وحده ولكنه من الكذب والباطل واللغو والخلف Sayyidina Umar is saying, fasting is not just about eating and drinking only, but lies, you need to avoid that. Anything that is haram, you need to avoid that. Wasting of time, a love we, wasting of time in all aspects. Islam does not agree with that. When we do this, when we understand Islam and understand Ramadan in this nature, going back to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we're going to benefit from the month of Ramadan. And that is, we are going to attain piety. We are requesting, engaging the public. We are engaging the brothers and sisters who will be fasting, inshallah, to start putting a scale. Start putting a scale, assessing your iman throughout the month of Ramadan. Because Allah said, when you fast, you will attain piety. Now start assessing yourself. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about those who have iman and praise them in the Quran. Alladheena amanu wa tatma'inna kulubuhum bi dhikirillah ala bi dhikirillahi tatma'inna kulub. Those who believe and they get tranquility in their heart with the remembrance of Allah. Indeed, with the remembrance of Allah, the heart get tranquility. So increase your remembrance of Allah. Subhanallah wa bihamdih. Subhana rabbi al-azim. La ilaha illallah. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa sallim. All this as adhkar. Do lots of this in your life. Especially when Ramadan comes. Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayk. Read the Quran as much as you can. Ponder over the meaning of the Quran. Act upon it. Because when you do that, your heart starts getting tranquility. And Allah praise those people when Allah's name is mentioned, you can see they've had the tranquility in their heart. When you are able to find yourself in this environment, now start putting the scales out. One of the scales we're going to look at today is the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه None of you will be a believer. None of you will be a believer. Hatta yuhibba li akhihi until he love for his brother ma yuhibbuhu li nafsi aw ma yuhibbu li nafsi. None of you will be a believer until you love your, for your brother what you love for yourself. If you want to have a best of cast, wish for your brother to have the same. If you want to have the best of house, wish for your brother to have the same. If you want to have the best of spouse, wish for your brother to have the same. Anything good that you want to have for yourself, wish for your fellow brother to have the same. Wish for your sister to have the same. Wish for anyone that is around you to have the same. And if you can check in your heart in the month of Ramadan, there is jealousy, there is hatred for someone to get something good that you want to get in your life but you don't want someone to get, then ask yourself, am I getting the Iman? Because it's part of Iman for me to be able to wish I just get something good that I have or something good that I'm looking forward to. You will not be a believer. That is what the Prophet said. La yu'minu ahadukum. You cannot become a believer until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. Ramadan is to increase your Iman. Assess yourself and see if you have achieved this, jealousy will say goodbye to you. Number two, scale number two that we're going to put across tonight. The Prophet said, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yuhsin ila jari aw fal yukrimu jara Whoever believes in Allah Believes in the day of Qiyamah that definitely Allah exists. One day this world will come to an end. There is going to be judgment. People will be penalized for doing bad things. People will be rewarded for doing good things. You believe in this? 
show it by taking care of your neighbor being nice to your neighbor respecting your neighbor it did not say your muslim neighbor your non no your neighbor should feel comfortable in your company that is what islam says that is one of the scales of assessing your iman ask yourself if i woke up for fajr does that mean i don't care i just need to be making noise disturbing the neighborhood i have a birthday party so i want to make sure that we disturb everyone because we are partying we're gonna park in front of the neighbor's house no one cares is that the type of neighbor you are or you are the one who when you don't see your neighbor after some days you knock their door and say hey it's been a while how are you doing it is part of your iman assess your iman in this way the prophet ﷺ said whoever believe man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir fal yuqrimu dhaifa if you believe in allah you believe on the day of qiyamah respect respect and look after your guests your guests we're talking about it is very important it is a topic by itself but we're not going into that وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَكُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُتْ Whoever believes in Allah and the day of Qiyamah should say good or keep quiet. Start assessing yourself. The words that come out of your mouth. Start assessing yourself. Do you think? Do you check? Do you analyze this word that come out of my mouth how is the other person going to feel? That is how you check your Iman. You can be a living angel among your people because you always give them the due respect. You avoid hurting them because you have Iman. And that is how we go about. The Prophet ﷺ said, when one of the companions came to him and said, Ya Rasulullah, I'll see you advise me the person said la taqdam do not get angry faraddada miraran this guy continue multiple times he wants more advice the person continue telling him la taqdam if whatever situation happen do not get angry for indeed when you get angry anything that you do will be something that you will be what Disappointed in yourself. La taqdab wa lakal jannah. When you are able to avoid being angry, you will be rewarded with jannah. And that take us to the companion of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet was sitting with the companions, and he said, "If you want to see a person going to jannah, walking on the surface of the earth, look at this direction. A man appeared. After some days." The Prophet ﷺ made mention of the same thing. The same person appeared. Ibn Umar, he decided to visit this guy and see what does he do extraordinary. He lived in his house for some days and he asked, what do you do extraordinary? Because this is the witness that the Prophet ﷺ has given about you. And he said, Wallahi, at any given time, before I go to sleep, I check within myself anyone that have wronged me i make sure i've forgiven that person sincerely between myself and allah before i go to bed i've never gone to bed with the hatred of any individual so here we are the prophet is telling us don't be angry the last part we're going to talk about which is of course the last hadith i'm going to use as our scale of assessing our iman is the Prophet ﷺ is saying, مِنْ حُسْنِ الْإِسْلَامِ الْمَرْئِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِهِ It is in the best of one's Islam to leave what does not concern them. Don't be interested in people's life. Don't be interested trying to dig in and see what people do in their life. Try to avoid looking at people's secret to talk about. Try to avoid 
looking for people's mistakes to talk, to talk about. For indeed, you doing that shows that you are not a good Muslim. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, you have to stay away from what does not concern you. And of course, with all this, we will end up asking ourselves, as human, we make mistake. When you make mistake, that is not the end of the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you opportunity to always come back and repent. So we need to understand every children of Adam, every child of Adam is someone who make mistake. But the best among us, as the Prophet sallallahu said, is at tawabun those who repent. So all this that we made mention, if we couldn't do as much as we can, let's repent more to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With that, inshallah, we will be among those that will succeed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us and give us opportunity to practice what we've learned. Ala usalli wa usallim ala rasulina Muhammad. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.